Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to inspect a frame for rust. This can be used on your own personal vehicle or if you are purchasing a vehicle. As some of you know, I live in Canada, specifically in the rust belt where salt is used and this can be quite the problem, causing damage over the years. While this example is being done in a full frame vehicle, the same process can also be applied to inspect unibody vehicles too as they do have enclosed structural components and subframes. Some vehicles are at more of a risk to failing frames than compared to others, unfortunately Toyota is a good example of this. Frame rust is an even bigger problem with enclosed structures now as it can trap road debris which keeps in moisture, making a damp environment ideal for rust. For this I will be using a 2006 Dodge Ram as an example and this is considered to be a clean frame for the year and what it's been exposed to. First going from the outside, we can do a visual inspection. The frame has had an oil spray applied at some point in its life as shown by the buildup. A plastic scraper can be used to expose the paint in behind if you wish or you can sometimes remove this with your finger. This would expose the base and it's sometimes good to see what's hiding behind it. A factory painted frame will have a smooth clean finish. If you are noticing paint over what appears to be pitting metal, someone has painted over what was a rusty frame. Painting is fine as long as someone did a good job. With the small amount of rust on this frame, I'll probably go around with a wire wheel to spot clean and paint those areas to prevent it from getting worse. Areas which can be exposed to more road debris, basically sandblasting the paint from the frame would be the fender wells. This is especially an issue on vehicles that have been driven on gravel roads. Once that paint has been removed, the metal is now bare and this will result in rusting. Other issues can be areas which allow dirt to become trapped, such as flat brackets or ones which create a pocket. An example of this would be the rear leaf spring brackets on the frame. This was a common problem on the Ford Rangers and Mazda B series trucks. I had a problem like this on a 1989 Ranger and those brackets were replaceable. For this truck on the other hand, these brackets appear to be welded onto the frame instead. Moving on to the inside face of the frame, this is where you'll have to climb underneath the vehicle. Again, inspect for any rust, a common area can be next to the exhaust where the heat can melt any snow with a salt mixture, accelerating the rust. Also a problem on the third generation Rangers, 1998 and newer. Open the hood, depending on the vehicle you may be able to get a good view from here. I would recommend having a good high power flashlight in order to get a good view so you don't miss anything. Here I'm using my LED rechargeable flashlight from Mobile Distributor Supply made by OEM Tools, model number 24607. With the 500 lumen Cree LED bulb, it illuminates the darkest of places. A link to this will be included in the video description. The RAM even allows for easy viewing of the frame rails. Other vehicles you may need to climb underneath and view the bumper from the back side. The next thing which also can be done is using a hammer. If you're inspecting a vehicle to purchase, be sure to ask the owner's permission first. A chipping hammer, such as what I have here, is excellent for poking at rust. With the pointed end, you'll find a soft spot right away. Another option would be using a ball peen hammer such as this. I'd only recommend using this on rusty areas where you may see scaling or bubbling. Don't use this on any painted areas as you can risk chipping away the paint, removing that layer of protection. As for other parts of the frame, use a dead blow hammer instead. For this I have my OEM Tools 3-piece set, model number 25517. This will provide a solid hit, demonstrating a consistent sound. With the rubber exterior, this helps prevent any damage to the paint, which would be hard to prevent with a metal hammer. A link to this will be included in the video description too. Irregularities in the sound may show up where the frame may change its shape, there's a bracket, or a repair has been made. If a solid plate was welded in, you would obviously see here a more solid tone. This may even show areas where someone has used filler to do a quick cover up on the frame. I have seen this in the past. And finally, I would recommend using a bore scope. There are various products on the market. This one I have recently reviewed. If you did purchase a vehicle and found out later that it does need a frame replacement or repair, this could easily cost you thousands of dollars. You may have noticed those factory holes while inspecting the frame. This is a great way to view inside the frame. Here we can see the interior condition. The frames on the Toyotas, while they may look good from the outside, they are known to rust from the inside out. The tube frames do tend to trap more road debris as mentioned earlier and not all frames are equipped with large enough drain holes. 
Even if the frame looks perfect from the outside, inspecting the inside can show any previous repairs, bubbling, excessive scale, or any other damage which may jeopardize the structural integrity. Other tips would be familiarizing yourself with frame designs and issues specific to a vehicle you're considering on purchasing. This includes common rust areas or failure points and the design so you can easily spot repairs such as a welded patch which wasn't from factory. Ask around on car groups such as Facebook or even research photos through Google. If there's any concerns with a particular vehicle, don't be afraid to take a photo and ask for input on those car communities. The next question which may be asked, and I'll cover it briefly, is if a frame can be repaired. Unfortunately, it's a very debatable area. By far the best option is replacing a rotten frame, but that can be costly and you'll need the right workspace to do so if you're doing it yourself. As for repairing a frame by welding, it can be done, but there are many considerations. Many professionals such as body shops will not weld a patch in as this affects how a frame reacts in an accident, jeopardizing its structure. This is a liability for a shop which is why they refuse such work. There are also certain methods for welding frames so cracks don't form. If a frame is rotten and repaired, you may possibly have other issues in the future where another portion develops a hole or if the metal you welded to is solid enough. As for preventing rust and providing a protective layer, a rust inhibiting coating is your best option. This would be a oil or wax spray. Stay away from rubberized or asphalt style coatings. While these look good, they can trap moisture causing excessive rust. This is something I'll cover in a future video. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.